So this video is going to be really long, so I'll use the intro to explain to you guys how many amazing things is included in this map. It includes 14 individual redstone rooms, a penthouse, a laser detection system underground, a secret vault, all of the redstone farms you can imagine, redstone storage, mega storage systems, as well as a ton of secret and hidden rooms located all across the map, and obviously, it looks really well too. Hey, what's up my fellow twisters? Welcome back to another redstone map showcase. Today we're taking a look at a really incredible redstone skyscraper. Take a look at this guys, that looks so freaking epic. And not only that, but it is a fully functional working redstone skyscraper. It includes a lot of awesome decorations, floors, balconies, and just a ton more. And as you can see, the property is just as epic as the building itself. We're gonna take a quick look at that right now by flying around to show you guys that Every single thing in this map is really detailed and it's by far one of the best or if not the best redstone skyscraper I have ever seen and this is actually one of my favorite redstone maps ever because I've always wondered why no one made a redstone skyscraper before and the map creator that created this is basically making my dreams come true right now. So here we are at the front of the property. This map is created for me by KCJ08 or Eric, and I highly recommend you go down to the description box down below, check out his Twitter or his YouTube, and thank him for sharing this map with you guys. If he does receive that support, he might make more maps for you guys in the future, and he really does deserve it. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the front of this area. As you can see, it is nicely decorated. We can't go over every single thing in detail, because there's a ton of redstone in this map that we have to take a look at but as you can see we have a fountain right over here and the first bit of redstone is going to be this working grill very similar to my design but it's kind of modified to make it a bit better and basically what you do is come around the back drop down some coal into this hopper and then come around the front and just drop some of our meat onto the grill and a few seconds later it should get cooked and it pop out right on the floor so we're gonna wait for that in just a second it should happen all right, so there we go. That is our food popped out of the ground. Very simple grill and it works really well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this side of the map, which includes a few important bits of redstone as well as a nice area to kind of hang out. Now on this side, we need to use a torch key to basically activate this light over here. And basically you place down a redstone torch on this block, it pops out and then turns on the lights over here. And then you could do the same on the other side. Now what makes this, this important is because it allows us to activate a bit of redstone Stone, which we'll get to a little bit later in the video, but let's go ahead and pop down that uh, redstone torch As you can see it will basically turn on our lights and open up this door But that is not the entrance We are going to walk around or fly around to the other side Which is going to have the entrance located right over here So this is basically the other side of the property the official entrance is right over here as you can see very nicely decorated And then we have our counter where our guy is kind of just monitoring whoever comes in we have a belt to ring of course It's just for roll playing as well as we do have a water fountain right above the reception area as well as a huge walkway and just a lot of cool decorations now on this side we have an elevator which allows us to take it to four different floors which includes our bedroom our kitchen as well as two additional bedrooms which is included in this house and not only is this our elevator for this particular part of the building but we have two other elevators with multiple different floors so you don't have to worry about just having those amount of floors anyways let's go ahead and move on to this area this is basically going to be a secret room you would grab the bow and the arrow to shoot up into this corner and basically what you would do is grab your bow and shoot an arrow right between these blocks bam and it should open up a secret room at the bottom of our waterfall so let's go ahead and try this again there we go, it opened up and we basically jump down here. As you can see, we en now enter our secret room, which is going to be our automated farm. And you really don't need to do anything down here, it's just a secret room that you can add pretty much anything into. So you can modify the map and add in a vault or just something that you would like down here. As you can see, there's a lot of animals and whatnot, but um, yeah, that's one area in the map which I thought was pretty cool. Now we can go ahead and leave this area. The only problem with this is that there is no way to get back up unless you're in creative mode 
mode, but I guess you can add some ladders there, you know, if you wanted that to happen. So when you take up the arrows from here, as you can see, the area closes, and now we can go ahead and take a look at the rest of the map. Now, first things first, we are going to take a look at this elevator and all the floors before we get to the other parts in the house, but I do want to mention there's a ton of awesome things in this map that I highly recommend you guys stick around to watch, but let's go ahead and now take a look at this particular set of rooms. So we're going to do this in order. Let's click on the first floor. That light should light up and that indicates that we selected the first floor. We step on this area and then hit on this button and then we can just then travel up to the first floor. As you can see, it is a pretty realistic elevator. I do have to say it's really cool. And now we can enter the first floor, which is made exclusively out of red and pink blocks. And I guess it's like a female room or any room that you like. I mean, I like pink and stuff. Okay, so you can use this to send the elevator back down as well as we have just some random decorations scattered across the map such as a dining table an area just to chill out on your sofa as well as our bed and finally a lovely balcony which gives us a really cool view of the outside obviously if you copy and paste this into your world you will have a much better view of minecraft itself now we could go ahead and go back down to the first floor by hitting this button and then stepping on our elevator before it actually goes down. Why is that going up? That is so weird. All right, so here comes the elevator back down. I just love how freaking cool that looks. And now we can go ahead and click on the second floor. All the configurations changes around. We can step on over here, click on that button, and it should take us to our second floor room. As you can see, we're passing the first one. And now we are going to enter the second one. So this one is exclusively made out of blue and all of the different shades of blue. And I think it's really cool. We have some different designs. Obviously, we have an area over here with two sofas and a coffee table in the middle, as well as an area for crafting and storage, some armor stands, and just some lovely decorations and a bed over here, which I think is really cool. And I just love it. And of course, we have another balcony similar to the floor below us. Now we are going to the third floor. Let's go ahead and click that button. Step on the elevator yet again and take us up to the third floor. All right, so I think this is a kitchen according to the bowl of soup. And I hope it is because I, I don't think I've looked at this one. Okay, so here we are on the third floor. This is going to be a nice area with a pool table. Very lovely. It's decorated quite well with a neutral color. And it doesn't look like we have a kitchen up here, but we do have a nice sofa made out of rocks as well as a fireplace and another balcony. So I'm not sure why it has a bowl of soup, but either way, let's go ahead and take a look at the final floor. I'm not going to go into to the elevator again because you guys get the idea but this basically takes you up to the fourth floor which is i believe the master bedroom why is there just a table up there oh i don't know but anyways there's just a table up here dining room table as well as some lighting and some decoration and of course a balcony and i'm kind of confused but i mean hmm that's a bit weird. Okay, anyways, that is the fourth floor. Just includes a table, and it looks really nice. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the house. Coming across to this hallway, we have two different areas we could go to. To the left, we have a really complex elevator, which we'll take a look at at the end of the video. That includes seven different floors, or actually eight different floors, which is really insane. As well as we have an area over here, which includes most of our complex redstone. Now, on this side, we have two levers on the top over here, which controls the lighting. Let's go ahead and click on those first. And then we have another elevator over here, which takes us to four different rooms, which includes our tennis courts, a bathroom, a room, and library, as well as a secret area, which is going to take us to a gigantic underground facility in our house. We'll take a look at that after we take a look at some other stuff over here. First things first, we have our water plus lights, which is basically lighting over here and water falling down. We have the opposite button to kind of, you know, reverse that effect, as well as we could do the same thing on the other side as well as once we activate those systems at the outside like I was mentioning at the beginning of the video that is when you could use this system right over here so you have to do that bit first on the outside before you could do this on the inside but basically you can now hit this button to either open and close your door once those systems are activated you basically have to click the button twice as you can see the doors will now close and then you click it again and the doors will now open. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the third elevator. We're going to check out floor number one, which is going to be our room. We basically stand directly in the middle 
up this elevator, hit that button on the ground, and it takes us up to floor number one, pushes us out, and now it kind of disappears. And we can basically go into the room to the right. So as you can see, we have a nice small living room over here with a sofa and a TV. Very lovely and nicely decorated, as well as we have a hallway in the middle for crafting and storage. And finally, our bedroom on the side with a piston storage chest and a nice view of the outside. Now, this is going to be a lovely little creation. Basically, when you right click on it, you cannot access that chest. But when you flick the lever, you can now access this chest, which makes it a nice little area to store your items. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of this floor on this side we have a hallway that's going to just be here for decoration as well as another hallway I guess you could add in whatever you like with a lovely view of the outside as well as we have a armor stand for storage as well as a balcony which yet again gives us another view this time a much wider view of the outside area all right now let's go ahead and take a look at the second floor and we do this by just basically going back down here falling down on top of our slime block which is going to allow us to not die from any floor that we jumped from and activating the bathroom floor and I, one thing I do want to mention is that you cannot activate two of the levers at the same time. It will mess up the system so be careful of doing that. Now we could go ahead and go to the bathroom floor yet again by stepping on the middle hitting that button and it pushes us all the way up to the top. There we go. On the bathroom floor, we basically click on this button over here, which is going to turn on all of our lights. It's an instant block swapper on all of the walls. And as you can see, I just really love this design right over here. It looks really well, and it's a nice use of this block, which I still don't know how to pronounce. And also, we have a nice balcony over here yet again, which is similar to the floor below. Now, I'm not sure where the bathroom is going to be on this floor, but I guess it's just for role playing. But I, I really love the design and the color of the, the building itself. Now, let's go ahead and just fly up to the next floors because there's no point of showing you guys the elevator because it does work. On this floor, which is the third floor, we do have the tennis court. And the tennis court has a lever for lights. We basically flick that and it turns on all of, the, all of these lights at their ceiling. As well as we do have some big windows, which gives us a lot of natural lighting. Oh, okay, I didn't even see this. All right, so here we are in the library floor. It's basically just for decoration. We have a lot of storage over here as well as enchantment tables to get our enchantments. A second floor inside our library, which is a nice little addition as well as wonderful views of the outside. It's super realistic, and it's yet again nicely decorated. No time was spared on this, guys. It just looks really well. All right, so now let's go ahead and check out the balcony, which yet again is similar to all of the floors, considering it is, you know, built in tandem. All right, so now we can go ahead and take a look at the more interesting things which can be found in the floors below. Let's just go back down here and now click on this button. Of course, there are signs over here when you download the map where you could delete them to make these areas secret. You basically hit this button right over here here. It ejects a paper with the word secret on it. That's going to be our input for our secret area, obviously. And then we need to grab at least two of these. Since I'm on creative mode, I just copied them and got 64 of it. But basically, you would come over here, drop down your paper, wait five seconds, and it would open up a secret area in the ground. There we go, and he would basically just jump down here. You won't die from the fall damage, but it's still, um, you know, pretty normal to just jump down there. And when you drop down your paper into that hole, it does get dispensed back onto the floor, so you don't actually lose that paper. It just, you know, responds back over there or is dropped down by a hopper. Now, we could go back down over here and take a look at this area. This side is just for decoration, but on the right side, if we remove all the signs yet again, we have a secret passcode lock input. This only works in the daytime, so let's go ahead and just set it to day, which is basically time set zero, or you could just do it anytime the sun is up. And what you need to do now is basically activate or enter these three buttons in a rapid pattern to activate our secret room. You basically enter three, two, four very quickly and it should open up a secret room in the ground as you can see a staircase now leading to the bottom of our map we could use this button over here to close and open the door and then we can hold a torch in our hand because it is quite dark down here because of my shaders now we can enter this lovely area as you can see when we step on that pressure plate the door opens up and all of the lighting is turned on which is really good and also we have a lot of cool redstone systems located in this area now, this is where all of the crazy redstone starts. Now, on the right-hand side, as you can see, we have different chest plates, and this is basically going to be armor storage cases, and we can flick all these levers to open up these armor cases, which includes everything from diamond and gold all the way down to leather and chainmail. And yeah, that's basically that. You could grab all of your armor from that, or you could just close it and keep your armor hidden. Now, on the left-hand side, we have something a bit more complex. We have all of the redstone farms with very cool systems. Now, first things first, let's take a look at the, um, 
what is this, the cactus farm or the cacti farm? And as you can see, it is very colorful. That is one thing I love about this map creator is that he made everything look so good and so colorful. It's really just lovely to look at. And on this side, we have a lever over here, which is basically going to open up our chest to grab our cactus. You could only access this chest in game mode one. But don't worry about that, guys. If you cannot reach the chest to retrieve all of your cacti, you could go ahead and click on this button over here, which is going to put all of the cacti into a mega storage system. Now, when I say mega storage, this is a gigantic storage, which we'll see at the end of the video or close to the end of the video, which is absolutely mind blowing. So we can flick on that lever, as you can see, and now click on this chest. And as you can tell, our cactus is now being taken out of that chest and it is being transferred transported into our mega storage system, which we'll take a look at yet again later on in the video. Now let's go ahead and uh, go onto the other farms and take a look at it. And over here we have our sugarcane farm and we basically flick this lever, the door opens up, which is what I like. And also on this side, a very, very beautiful area for growing our sugarcane. Yet again, I just love how the map creator took simple designs and simple mechanisms and just made a really wonderful looking area. I mean, come on, have you ever seen a sugarcane farm that looks like this i mean i haven't now on this side we have two levers yet again one for our mega storage and one to open up the area for our chest we really don't need to go over that yet again so let's go ahead and now leave the sugarcane farm area now moving on i think we have another farm which is going to be our watermelon farm opens up the door yet again a very nice use of storage and design this place just looks really well and i guess this is a mumbo jumbo design and you could use this lever over here to turn it on and off the harvesting of our watermelon and i guess this door is just to push the minecart in case it stops yet again we have another area for our chest and mega storage the chest is going to be here and the mega storage basically just sends our items down into that storage system. All right, moving on, we have the pumpkin farm, which is going to be yet again automated, a very nice use of space and design. It just looks really well, and it's very similar to the one before, another mumbo jumbo design. We have the same configuration and setup over here, except with pumpkins and finally an area for our open chest, as well as our mega storage lever right back there. All right, so let's go ahead and now take a look at the final farm, which I think is going to be our potato as well as our wheat farm and our carrot farm. All right, so let's flick that lever, open up this area, and this is going to just be a lather going all the way back down to the bottom because I guess we're running out of space for, you know, walkways and whatnot. But um, as you can see, this one is a bit different because it includes a bone meal input. You basically add in your bone meal, which is going to go into automatic dispense system. As you can see, our dispensers are up here, as well as we do have a chest with our three different items, which includes, of course, our potato, our carrots, as well as our wheat seeds. And now we could go ahead and enter this minecart. And then it sends us off and we can basically go back and forth and plant down our wheat. It grows automatically, it breaks, and then we can collect it, which is just really cool. As you can see, potatoes, and then we get carrots, and that's just really awesome. I've never seen a system like this, and it's just really cool to me. Now, what's awesome about this is that when you exit the minecart, it just stops. I really don't know how that works, but I really enjoy it. Now, we can place back down all of our stuff back into our chest. All right, so we have seen everything in this area of the house, but that is not the end, guys. We have a ton more redstone that is located right behind this painting. Yet again, we have a lot of signs over here, but if you remove it, no one is going to know that there's a secret area behind this wall. Now, what you need to do is grab that second secret paper that you got, which I told you guys to get a little bit later on in the video, and drop it right on this area. It should go into a hopper and then open up a door which is located right behind the sign, and then we can walk right on through. And then you can use this button over here to open and close the door which is very cool, and also we have a huge area made out of these lovely blocks. I've never seen this block used in this quantity, and it just looks really awesome, and I really enjoy it. Maybe in the underground generated bases it looks like this, but I've never seen it as of yet. But as you can see, we have three different areas in this, um, you know, underground redstone area. So let's go ahead and take a, take a look at the one on the left first. And to access this area, you want to go ahead and grab a bit of redstone dust, place it on top of the blue 
blue wool, not the yellow, and not the red. So obviously you'll have these signs when you download the map, but I'm just telling you guys so you make sure and not place it over here because it's going to mess up the entire system. All right, so we basically place down some redstone dust on top of the blue wool. It opens up this area, which is really seamless, fast, and nice. And then we come over here to our, um, you know, gigantic industrial furnace. Now this is, I guess, created by Tango Tech. And this guy, I guess, is another YouTuber. So credit goes to him. As well as we do have our furnace modes here. We have XP mode as well as automatic mode. Which now what this means is that the XP mode allows for all of the items to stay in the furnace. And when you go around to pick it up, you get XP. And then the auto storage mode allows you to just take out all of the items as soon as they're smelted down and then sent into our system. Now that is pretty cool. And also we have another lever over here, which lets the items stay in this area or go to the mega storage system. All right, so now we have the inputs, which is of course going to be our regular blocks, I guess, smooth stone blocks, as well as our fuel input. So we basically add down fuel over here, which is going to be coal, as well as the ore of our choice. And then it should automatically get, you know, filtered into our furnaces. And then we could choose either automatic or XP mode. So for some reason that is not filtering. So let's enter some gold into this chest and hopefully it starts up in just a second. So there we go. That is our furnaces, as you can see, automatically smelting out our iron ore. It does take some time. And when it's finished, we could go ahead and collect it manually, as you can see, grab that XP, or we could switch to auto. And when it smells down, as you can see, it will basically, yet again, take it into the automatic storage. So bam, there you go, automatically dispensed. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the other side of this area, which is going to include a very lovely looking door. I guess it's like a creeper door or something like that. And this is going to include a jukebox um, input over here, which is a pretty interesting system. Basically what you do is grab a red music disc from this chest and then pop it into our jukebox and then it should open up that door when the music disc is played. So as you can see, that is really cool. And now we could go ahead and enter this area. We could use this button to open or close the door, as well as this is going to be our enchantment or potion area. So if you guys don't know how to use potions, you basically take some water bottles, place it up into the top left chest, choose the items that you want to have inside of your, you know, potions for the effects of it. And then you could go ahead and retrieve your potions right at the bottom. So what you need to do is basically yet again place down three water bottles over here and then flick the levers that you want. I'm just going to choose say sugar and maybe nether wart. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we could go ahead and just wait for our you know, potions to be dispensed into our chest. Now, I'm not really sure how you would activate the system. I guess stepping on the pressure plate would work. And oh, stepping on the pressure plate actually allows you to see the entire process happening. So maybe, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe you could click on this lever over here to add in some redstone or something like that. But um, I'm not sure how to brew properly. So this might just be me not knowing what to do. So if you guys download the map, you could try it out for yourself. But let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the map. This is going to be the final area for this, for this section at the bottom of the map. And this includes a laser detection system. And basically when you walk across here, it spawns on a bunch of lava, which slows you down. And then that slows you down and allows you to fall into our lava trap below. So let's go ahead and take a look at that again. You walk into the lava and if you walk forward too much, you fall down into our lava pitfall trap. Now this is going to be our Pasco lock input and to basically turn our laser detection system off, you would want to place all of these levers down and all of these levers up at the bottom. A pretty simple path. Look at this, every single block in Minecraft automatically sorted, stored, and you guys can retrieve it very simply. I mean, Come on, look, I'm flying at the fastest speed right now. This is so insane. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some examples once we get to the end. As you can see, it's taking quite some time, but basically we have some blocks over here, which is going to be our smooth stone. We could go down to any one of these blocks, and as you can see, we could get ourselves dark oak wood planks. I'm not sure where these blocks are coming from. I know where a majority of them are coming from, but I'm not sure where every single one is coming from. And this is going to be our iron ore. And we could fly down here to grab maybe sponges as well as tree bark and pretty much every single thing has a bit of items in here. So let's go ahead and fly back down to the middle and I think I have an idea what this chest is for. So this chest over here I guess is the input for any other items that you want to add into your mega storage that is not automatically featured in the areas that we saw a bit earlier. So say for instance our farm is automatically sent to our mega storage area. We have a chest over here to send say staying 
stained glass if you would like. So there you go, we have some stained glass inside of this area. And yeah, that's basically how that would work. So I guess the language or the words are kind of messed up here. So yeah, that is basically the final area in the bottom section of our house. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the final elevator, which is located on the top property. And we would basically just backtrack our way all the way to the top. This elevator, yet again, is going to include eight different floors and it's going to include a very nice little selection system over here. So basically what we do is activate any floor that we like. This is going to be, of course, the first floor. We could choose the second floor right over here. Click on this button once we step on this and it should take us to that floor. Now, let's click on that button and I guess it just brings the elevator down for you. So let's just wait here a second. Bam, there we go. The light turns on to indicate that the elevator is over here and then we can go ahead and now head on over to the first floor. I really like this because it is a realistic elevator yet again and the door opens up. We could choose any other floor that we want to go to from this floor as well. As you can see, it's pretty much just an inner walkway, hallway. There's no rooms over here, so it's, it's kind of disappointing, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. You could add in anything onto the map that you like because, I mean, the map is fully customizable once you download it. So there's a, like a lot of space over there that you guys could take advantage of. Now we could go ahead and maybe head on over to the fifth floor. Let's go ahead and do that. There's no point of going one floor at a time because there's a lot of different things over here. And what we need to do is basically just go into our elevator this time and click on this button it should take us to the fifth floor and it's going to take quite some time but we'll eventually get there and here we are i believe and now we can go ahead and exit the elevator yet again a very similar floor a balcony on this side of the map as well as we do have a balcony on the other side if i did not show you guys that so very similar and identical on either sides but i think there's a different penthouse which we're going to take a look at now all right so here we are on the eighth floor as you can see a balcony straight to the left and this looks like a penthouse suite like a master bedroom area so now let's go ahead and take a look at everything over here to the right we have a very extensive hallway we have a lever over here which I guess is going to turn on this light and I'm not sure really what that does and we have another balcony over here as you can see it looks very nice we have a lovely sunrise as well as a gigantic balcony which is going to take us to a pool on the outside we have another level over here which is pretty interesting another elevator which I have not seen until this point in the video so let's go ahead and take a look at some other stuff because I have not even checked this out for myself yet so on this side, I believe we have our bedroom and it is going to be right over here. So there's an elevator going side and click the button and hold shift. So we have two different elevators, which is very confusing. We have another pool at the outside. So I guess there's two different pools. Now we could go ahead and take a look at maybe the first elevator because we saw this one a bit earlier. And I guess this is going to take us up to the very top. Let's go ahead and just enter this elevator and maybe step on this. Oh, oh my gosh, there we go. We get like popped all the way to the top. I guess we would just walk forward. And oh my gosh, we just walk forward, step on all of those pressure plates and we get popped all the way to the top floor. This is going to be another, I guess, balcony area. As you can see, there's a lot of decorations up here as well as an inner area, which is going to include another elevator, a TNT elevator as well as some other random decorations. So there's a lot of stuff over here that I did not see previously. As you can see, there's like a lot of different decorations and whatnot. So I guess over here is the second elevator, but let's go back down and make sure because I'm really confused at this point. So this staircase, which we have not entered yet, is going to take us into a lovely hallway with a chandelier in the middle, as well as a little balcony yet again, which is quite nice. You can add in anything that you like into this room, and that's basically going to wrap up this area. Now, we're going to keep that elevator in mind, as well as the TNT cannon on top, but let's go ahead, back down into this section of the map and check out this elevator, which is something I did not take a look at yet. So here we are. We basically step on over here, click on this button and hold shift. And what the heck just happened? Oh my gosh, we are flying back and forth. That is one epic elevator. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yet again, we are at the top and I guess this just takes us to the same place that we were before. Now we can go ahead and take a look at this TNT elevator, which I'm very curious about. All right, guys, so here we go. We are going to jump down into our TNT elevator and let's see what happens. All right, so, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Oh my goodness, I'm waiting for it. Oh my gosh, we went up onto the top floor of the building and now I guess we could free climb all the way onto the top. And I was watching a bunch of free climbing videos and as you can see, this is just insane. We're free climbing all the way to the top. 
All right, so we're going to the top of the antenna, and I just love this. I freaking love this, guys. Look at this. We could travel all the way to the top of this building without using any creative mode or mods. This is so freaking cool. And can, can we jump down into that water? I don't think so, but let's let's try it, guys. Jump! Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, I missed. Okay, never mind. We died, and we came back down into our bed. But anyways, guys, I think that's going to basically wrap up today's video. It is currently 15 minutes into the recording. I guess this is going to be a really large match map but i did enjoy it is worth all of the time spent on it because this is a super detailed map and yet again a dream come true for me because i've always wanted a redstone skyscraper anyways guys yet again this basically wraps up the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please take one second to smack the like button also don't forget to leave a comment down below suggest another redstone map that you would like to see in the future if you have maps that you would like to submit you could tweet it at me or email me in my you know links down below but anyways guys this was twist and i'll see you later Thank you